Hello everyone, um, today we're playing Civilizations 5, uh, Gods and Kings, I think. This is the complete edition, so whatever the, um, the title screen says it is. But we are Maria Theresa, the uh, uh, Empress of the Holy Roman Empire, or the Austrian Empire. Um, I always, well I don't always pick her, but I usually pick her because she has this diplomatic marriage, uh, which is very useful um, for marrying... Um, you know, your your allies with a city-state, and you can buy them um, by uh, marrying them, uh, marrying your people to them, um, which I'll only only do if the the people want. You know, you know, if the boys and girls want to get married, they can get married. But we get a little alliance from it. Okay, uh, we also have these hussars, um, which are. Eh, yeah, I don't. I don't really like them. I don't care that much. They're more scouting purpose. Um, they require horses. I don't care for things with horses that much, uh, especially later in the game. And um, coffee houses, which uh, have a twenty-five percent great people um, generation rate. Yeah, uh, they it, mostly I like them because they increase production um, by quite a bit, and they increase your engineering slot. So uh, I like building these. These are my two, my two things that uh, make me want to be Austria, make me to be Maria Theresa. Okay, um, this is a new game. I'm setting it on quick, and uh, let's explore a little. Um, because ooh, elephants. Um, we are gonna go right. No, that was dumb. I should have gone right there. Um, my bad. I already messed up. Oh no! Don't hate me. Uh, we could, no, we can't. We don't want to build there. We want to build on the coast. Um, this is set on Earth. Ooh, I don't even know if this is actually, like, the ocean. Uh, it doesn't really look like the ocean. Oh, well. Um, we're gonna build there anyway. We're gonna go explore these ruins. Um, but yeah, we are set on Earth. It's set on normal, uh, Prince difficulty. So I'm probably going to lose. Um, there are six countries with 12 city-states. Uh, so that's... Ooh, and more ruins? What the hell? Okay, we're just... Yeah. Um, the uh, enemies um, are set to... Uh, uh, random AI. So uh, they're... Um, their personalities, uh, or yeah, ran yeah, random AI. I think that's what it's called. Their personalities aren't. Um, no, I don't want to buy stuff. I want to build stuff. Uh, their personalities aren't set like they normally would be. Um, I'm gonna build this because with one of the um, the um, increased culture, uh, you get you know your policies, and I like to have uh, a lot of policies. Um, Especially when uh, one of them allows me to build a worker, I believe. Um, to start off, we're going to go with... I like mining because I like increasing production. But I also like getting to calendar where I can... Um, I should be... Yeah, I would be able to uh, farm this area. So I'm going to do that first. I'm going to do pottery. And uh, it's set on quick... So that uh, it's a little more interesting video. Um, awesome. Yes, we got more culture. Someone founded a pantheon. That's probably not good for us. They're probably much farther ahead. Like, one of the things I don't like about this game is that um, everything is so random. Uh, where people might start ahead of you. And I guess that's to make it more fair. But, um... Uh, like they, they, yeah, this is the one. Um, so hopefully within 10 turns when we're like building warriors or something, um, we'll be able to, damn it, um, we'll have a worker by then. Uh, but yeah, I don't like that people start much farther ahead of you where they're already building pantheons and I'm just now setting, settling a city. Um, I know I wasted a turn or two turns, I don't know. Um. But, you know, I don't think they should be that far ahead of me. 
So yeah, these are going to be longer episodes. I'm going to get to talk to you a lot more. Uh, I get to tell you stories. Because that's what I like. I like telling stories. Um, <laughs> we're going to explore this area before we do anything else. Uh, but I just made a video this morning, like a secret video, it's not a video for you. Say to him that fashion method. What makest thou? Um, I, where I where I told this story anyway, but I thought it was a good story. Um, it was about when I was in high school. I was a freshman in high school. I think I just turned like fifteen at the time because I. It was not long after my birthday that my sister and I got in a fight. Um, why do they want you to build scouts? Scouts are absolute garbage, I think. Um, yeah. Anyway. Uh, we will, yeah, build a warrior, and then we'll go granary. Um, but I was in high school, and I was... Um, we're not going to have a worker for a while, so it doesn't really matter. That's going to take nine turns. Um, more ruins. What the hell is this? We found three runes already. Um, I was in high school, I was uh, four, 15 years old, and um, my sister and I had just gotten in a fight because I had supposedly made her late for school, which I hadn't, or late for, not school, um, for pom practice, pom-poms, um, because she was like part of the dance team, and she was a senior, and she was a captain, but she would always go home after school, I don't know why, and... Um, like, she would drive me home. Like, uh, otherwise I would have walked home, you know. Hey, we met someone. Okay. That's a bit dickish. Um, but we were friends. Or, we weren't friends. So, uh, you know, she was. we were always having little feuds. And, um, apparently, one of the feuds was that I made her late. So I'm getting really distracted. It's hard to tell this story and uh, uh, play the game at the same time. But, ooh, worker. Um, so yeah, I made her late. I started walking home. It's not really important. That's just set up. And uh, I was walking home one day, and I lived about two miles away from the school. Not that far. Um, just far enough that, like, you know, it was a good... It kept me skinny as a kid until I started driving. Um... <laughs> But, uh, yeah, it was about two miles away, and I would walk mostly in neighborhoods, and, um, so, you know, it was very safe, um, very, like, affluent area, not, not a lot of crime, um, it's subdivisions, and, uh, one day I was walking, I was probably about a mile from my house, and this guy, this Hispanic guy, uh, drove by, um, on his bicycle, and, in front of me, he fell into, like, an undeveloped lot. He, like, tipped over on his bicycle. It looked very suspicious because it didn't look like it was an accident. It looked like it was absolutely on purpose. Um, yeah, because. Um, because it was, uh, as I later found out. But, it, like, even right away, I, I could tell there was something off. And um, he... Who needs orders? Oh, my warriors. Okay, you're going to be exploring this way. Um, what was I saying? Oh, uh, the guy fell over, and uh, he he pretended that he was hurt. Like, he kept telling me he, like, broke his leg. Yeah, of course. Sure. Is that, like, actually... He's an Incan? Is that right? Oh, Mayan, sorry. Um, I didn't read that before. Uh, is that actually, like, how the language Mayan spoke? Because that'd be really impressive um, if Sid Meier had gotten that correct. Um, just because I didn't, I didn't think anyone spoke that anymore. Maybe they do. I don't know. Um, anyway, the guy fell over, and he, he kept wanting me to come over to him and help him. Um, his way of me helping him was um, by carrying him to my house. And he was like, a, I was 14, 14, 15, um, and he was like a fully grown adult, and he just looked suspicious. Um, you know, I, I, yeah, he looked suspicious. Like he had fallen over in front of me. I had every reason to be suspicious of him. Um, and he was on his bike, and he wasn't, he didn't speak a lot of English, um, so it was kind of, 
difficult, I guess, to uh, communicate. So teach us. Uh, we have our calendars now. and um, But he kept trying to tell me he wanted me to pick him up and carry him home because he was uh, injured or whatever. And um, we'll build archery. Um, we want me to pick him up, carry him home, and I'm... Uh, Sorry, this is, this is taking way too long to explain the story. It's not that great of a story. Um, but yeah, I was carrying him home. Elephants. I'm thinking if I should build another city over here. Um, you want me to carry him home? I didn't. I, uh, I I was like, oh, I can't I can't do that. I don't want to. I'm not comfortable with that. Um, I can call 911 for you. And um, he, he, he didn't like that. He's like, no, no, no. Uh, don't call. Just help me. Um... And eventually, this old lady comes out uh, from across the street, and she's kind of, like, checking on me, I guess. She's like, oh, is, is everything okay over here? And it very clearly wasn't. I was very clearly uncomfortable. Um, but she's like, oh, maybe maybe you should just go on home and or call 911 or something. Because I, I, if the guy was actually hurt, I wanted to help him. Um, he wasn't hurt, and I very clearly should have known. But this old lady, um, she's not... You know, she's not being very clear about what she thinks I should do. Um, like, she's like, "Oh, if you want to help him, then you should call 911." But she wasn't like actively helping me, where she's like, um, you know, backing me up or whatever. She wasn't. <laughs> she wasn't protecting me like you expect an adult an adult to do. Um, you know, uh, and um, what was I saying? Uh, so yeah, she wasn't. Eventually, she just left me. She left me with this guy who wants me to help him, who, like, won't let me leave until I help him. Um, you know, so that was, that was fun. Um, which one of these? Ah, it's this one. Okay, we'll do this. Um, because we want a settler, this one. And so the guy still wants me to help. I eventually call 911, and, uh, I get onto the line with the, you know, emergency services, um, the people who are, like, dispatching ambulances um and they ask me if he's hurt they ask me if i know him you know all this stuff i'm like no i don't know him i just you know he fell over in front of me i'm a 15 year old kid please help me <laughs> um help me help him because i don't know what to do i don't want to be rude if he's actually hurt but i also don't want to put myself in any sort of danger um ooh, should we build one of these uh more culture 10% food growth and fi ooh, um, that could be useful. And faith. Okay, let's see. Before I finish the story, um, what role should we be playing in my city? Should we be scientific? Should we be cultural? Or should we be religious? Um, I'm going to go that we are scientific. With a little bit of culture. We're hard... Uh, yeah. We're upper class, scientific. Uh, very fancy people. We, we fancy ourselves. very Because we're so rich, we fancy ourselves. So money is our main concern. And because of that, we have all this money. We're like, oh, of course, we're going to spend it on luxury things. Um, not including religion. Um, but then we're also going to have a lot of, like, you know, class discrepancy where we have uh, poor people... And that'll be our production and farmers. So, uh, yeah, money is our main concern, I think. Yeah. Okay. Um, sorry. Let's get back to the story. Um, oh, I didn't actually build anything. <laughs> so we're not going to build this. Or, no, we're not going to build this. And we're not going to build that. We're going to build an archer. Because we need to prepare for war. <laughs> you know, war is going to come. <laughs> and we're going to lose. <laughs> uh, but... So anyway, this the guy gets up once I call uh, 911, and he starts riding off. And, um, you know, I, I obviously thought this was very weird. Uh, so I went home, and I told my dad. Um, or I told, at first I told the, the people what was um, the people on 911. Oh, oh shit. Let's, let's run away. Let's come back. Retreats. These guys will protect us if uh, they start attacking. Uh, we're not ready to take on a bear barbarians yet thou shalt not muzzle the ox when he treadeth out the corn okay uh so yeah the guy rides away i tell the 
uh, emergency services that we're okay that I'm okay um, this is money this is how we're gonna get guilds and so we're gonna do that um, and they're like okay you should only call if it's an emergency I'm like I'm a kid I, I, I felt unsafe and that was the main reason I was calling you uh, it was an emergency in my mind I mean <laughs> What the hell am I supposed to do when, uh, when this guy, um, who doesn't speak a lot of English, is asking me to help him, and he's falling right in front of me, and he looks very suspicious. Um, I thought I was, I thought this was an emergency. Apparently not. Um, but anyway, the, uh, the, what you call it, the, uh, I went home, I told my dad, and, um, he called the police, and he was like, uh, this is pretty suspicious. Um, we're gonna build this. Uh, this is pretty suspicious. Maybe, um, maybe you guys should go and look for this, you know, suspicious person. Jesus, these guys are, like, poised to attack. Um, they got two units and then their city, and I, I feel a little unsafe right now. Um, considering I don't have much money, so I can't fund that many units. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, so he called the police. Reported the suspicious suspicious person. Apparently, the guy had um, broken in. Oh shit! Oh shit! Uh, the guy had broken into. Um, but, uh, uh, okay, we're gonna attack him. Uh, maybe they'll kill each other, and I'll get rid of this unit, or uh, they'll get promoted, and I can go around. I don't know. At least give him something to do. Um, they found him, and he had broken into cars and stolen a stereo. Um, he had a piece of it on him, and uh, we're gonna go back to our borders. Uh, he had a piece of it on him, and he also had a revolver uh, in his pocket. It was empty, I think, um, if I remember right. But you know, still having a revolver is hey, I was gonna kill them. God damn it! Now, <laughs> now my guys have nothing to do. Um, Okay, I guess we're just going to keep exploring. Uh, we'll go down here. Um, so yeah, he had a revolver. I think it was empty. But, uh, you know, as a kid, that's a pretty scary thing to have to go through. To have this guy, who's a stereo thief, um, fall down in front of you and pretend to break his leg. I don't know why I was being treated like the, the villain here when I was trying to help this guy if he was actually hurt. He wasn't. I should have known he wasn't. And uh, call 911 to make sure that I was safe. So yeah, that's my story. It took me 10 minutes to tell that story. Not, you know, it should, it should have only taken me like two. Wisdom and virtue are like the two wheels of a cart. Okay. So we have entered, I think, the uh, medieval age. Uh, or not medieval, the um, classical age. If that, if I remember right. Um, okay. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was it was very not traumatizing or anything. It was just um, it was a thing that happened and it was scary at the time. Uh, we can't do anything yet. We don't have woodworking. Okay, you guys have nothing to do. You can go to sleep. Um, but yeah, it was a little, you know, scary for me at the time to uh, have to go through that. That's the scariest thing I've ever really had happen to me in my life. Um, there was another kind of scary thing when I was in college. Um, I was driving home and it was just like, it was more, it wasn't scary. Like I actually thought something was going to happen, but it was just scary. Like I had never encountered this before. Um, next turn. And, oh, damn it. I should have moved those guys. I forgot about them. Um, it was scary because I had never dealt with it before. And uh, um, I was driving home uh, from college. And I was driving on like these country roads. Um, well, it was an interstate. But interstates in Hi Iowa, because it's so much country, is not that different from any other road. It's like it, it is a country road, essentially. And um, yeah. Uh, like, so there's lots of people just kind of flying by. They don't really care about the speed limit. And, you know, why should they? Um, there are almost no cops that they're going to stop them. Um, 
and uh, like this guy is like I'm trying to pass someone because they're going pretty slow and I'm going like I'm not going fast I'm going maybe 70 like five miles over the speed limit um, which is generally what I do uh, when I drive um, on the interstate if you know I know there's aren't police around um, I just go a little bit over because I don't want to I don't want to you know I don't want to be in a death trap I don't want to be unsafe um, <laughs> but uh, I'll go back there <laughs> yeah, you're hurt don't die um, I don't want to be unsafe but uh, so I, I only go you know a little over the speed limit and um, this guy was like honking at me to go faster and he's in a big truck and um, it's just a little scary you know because it's like a genuine road rage as opposed to like just fuming in the car you know what why did that happen um you're on open terrain so yeah we'll go there um so yeah he was just like yelling at me and um i think i flicked him off or something just like some punk kid sort of reaction to what he was doing and uh like he i i yeah i flipped him off he was behind me i didn't even really think he would see it um i guess he did because once i passed the yeah let's be friends um that's good maybe he will open his board uh, i don't have man i think these guys are kind of trapped here for now um so they might die just because you know um, I don't, I don't have anything for them to really do right now. Um, I literally explore. Oh, let's kill him. Um, so he like, he sees me flipping him off, and so I pass the person in front of me, and uh, this guy pulls up next to me, rolls down his window, is like yelling at me, like the freaking braiding. He's not even looking at the road in front of him. I mean, it was empty in front of us, but he's just like yelling at me like flipping me off he's very red in the face he was like a, a redneck looking guy um and so i think it uh it was very stereotypical of him being like his big truck and just speeding down the highway and so he's he's obviously not having any sort of emergency if he's uh if he has the time to um oh geez if he has the time to do all this shit <laughs> go leave leave <gasps> um yeah, if he has the time to do all this, he's not in an emergency. So he's just speeding because, you know, that's what people do when they're in the cars. They're stupid. Um, the meek shall not. And, yeah, so that was scary because, you know, you're in, like, the country. You don't necessarily know what's going to happen. Um, and there's no one really around to hear you scream, unfortunately. And, uh, yeah, that was the only other really scary situation I think I've been in. Um, I, let's see, hold on. Let's open the tech tree first before we keep talking. Because um, I want to know where, um, what's it called is, uh, guilds. Okay, so I need mathematics and currency, and then I can build guilds, and then I can build, like, trading posts. Okay, that's what I want. That's what we're going for. We're not interested in writing yet. We're interested in money. So, in math. I mean, math is scientific. That's um, that's a good thing, right? Uh, it means it'll be a while before we get civil services, uh, I think, if I looked at that right. Um, okay, we're going to go right here, and we're just going to heal. <coughs> yeah, classical era. I think I'm in the classical era. Um, so I'm ahead of you, I guess. Ooh, a policy. That means we get a settler, and... Uh, I don't know where we're going to go. That guy's kind of cutting us off. Uh, we don't have Oprah. Oh, shit. There's a guy right there. Oh, shit. I did not want that to happen. Um, okay. You're going to have to go up here and attack these people. I think because they're archers, they're not going to steal him. But that might be wrong. Um, yeah, good. <laughs> Uh, I think um, warriors would definitely steal them, but uh, not archers. Can I attack you guys? Yeah. I wasn't sure if they would attack me back or not because they're also archers. 
Um, which seems a little weird, but whatever. Ah, I can't attack it. Um, we're cut off this way because he's grown so goddamn quickly. Oh, I guess he built two cities. Um, okay. This sucks. Because <laughs> this is where I've explored, and he's cut me off. Um, I don't want to go down. Uh, no. Um, well, I'd get pearls. I'm sure those bring me some wealth. Um, and I'd have a beach city. But I just don't have a lot of resources where I have all this water. Um, so yeah, I think I'm going to come, come over here. Grab... I guess I have to come up here because I don't... I have to take care of the barbarians first. Man, play on Prince is hard. Normally I play on... Warlord? Is that easy? Um, or maybe it's Chieftain? No, I think Chieftain is, like, beginner. That's how you learn the game. Okay, we're gonna come over here. <laughs> um, you're gonna come... Right here. Right here. Okay, we're far enough away that he's not gonna attack us. Um, yeah, so normally I play on Chieftain, and it's a lot easier. Uh, than the, or not Chieftain, Warlord. It's a lot easier than this. I know what to do at most times. Usually I still lose because I'm not very good at video games. <laughs> um, but yeah, usually I lose like early in the game because I just don't have... I, I mismanage my resources or whatever. I don't build enough warriors. Um, I try to go for... Oh yeah, that's, that's what I should do. I should build more warriors. Um, like just constantly for a while. Uh... Yeah, I shouldn't be making this much money. Um, which, I mean, nine, nine bucks isn't that much money. But, uh, ooh. It is not so much for its beauty that the forest makes a claim upon men's hearts. <gasps> Robert Louis Stevenson. It's an unsettled something, that quality of air, that emanation from old trees that so wonderfully changes and renews a weary spirit. Yeah, we got the Temple of Artemis. I don't know why Robert Louis Stevenson is describing it. Um, he's the guy who did... Um, uh, wait, is that correct? Hold on, I'm looking this up on my phone. Um, I want to say he's the guy that does Robinson Crusoe. Robert... No, Treasure Island. Robert Louis Stevenson. Yeah, that's who it is. He does. Yeah, he does um, Treasure Island. And, uh, oh, The Strange Case of Jekyll and Hyde. Of uh, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Um, I didn't know that. Um, I don't think I ever knew who wrote that. Uh, but yeah, he, um, he wrote Treasure Island. Which, if I remember right, that's one of the books that people mistake as, a um, like they, they don't think of all of the story when they think about it. They only think of a small part of it. Though that might just be Robinson Crusoe. Crusoe, um, which you haven't, if you haven't read the whole thing, um, it's very different from just being on the island. Like, he goes to Brazil, uh, which is a colony at the time, um, and he, uh, he, like, becomes a farmer. He leaves England because he's looking for, like, money or, or something, and he w goes over there on the ship, and he doesn't crash, but then he's in Brazil for a while, and he's, you know, not doing shit, um, he like he he's making money, but he's um, like it eventually settles up or uh, not settles up, dries up, and so he um, he leaves to go back to England, and then he gets in the shipwreck, and uh, that's when like the story that we all think of starts. But it's actually like halfway through the book, um, which uh, yeah, that's the definitely the best part of the story. So uh, I understand why it's like that. It's just. Um, uh, I'm debating whether or not to take these guys out. Um, I think I will. Because, I mean, they're, they're just going to be a threat the whole time if I don't. Um, I'm going to look over here. What? 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 Oh, those guys. I would love to take them out, but... I don't think these guys can take him out, and I'm kind of blocked off from actually helping you at the moment. Um, I would actually like to... Let's see, how much influence do I need? 
neutral, I would need 30. So if I... Oh, man. Yeah, I don't have enough money to... um To marry into them yet. Unfortunately. Um, otherwise, I definitely would. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay, let's be the warriors first. And attack them. So we're gonna have a two-prong attack um, with archers. Ah, uh, how far can archers attack? Hold on. Um, you guys just go there. I don't want you. Uh, you guys do nothing. <laughs> I don't want you settling a city there. That's a bad place for a city. Um, ouch. Oh, now I'm in the classical era. I thought I already was. My mistake. See, they, they pull out their bows, so it always looks like they're going to attack, but I guess they're not. Um, so let's move you guys over here. And yeah, you're you're still not. You're going to stay. You're not going to do anything. <laughs> I don't want you getting attack, attacked. Oh, we can build um, farms now. Our farms on the, the forests. What research should we do? Remember, we're looking into money. Currency. Ooh, that's um, 13 turns. I don't know that I like that yet. Yep, we're going to do it. Uh, this is our sole focus for the moment. <sighs> oh, shit. Okay, sorry. No, I, I was thinking... Um, that I was doing production, not <coughs> not research. Uh, my mistake. Okay, I can attack them. They don't seem like they have any warriors at the moment. Um, I can't. Hey, more ruins. Well, you know. <laughs> um, we're gonna stay back here so they can't get atta attacked. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, damn it. I I was hitting the arrow key and um, I accidentally hit and enter. Uh, because I have one of those stupid laptop keyboards that is very compact, even though this is as big a laptop as my last one, so I don't know why it has a compact keyboard. Um, mysteries of life, I guess. Uh. What? I didn't realize they attacked. Sorry, I'm still, uh, I'm not an expert at this game at all. I'm really bad at it, actually. <laughs> um, and one more turn. Uh, we have a golden age. They want whales, apparently. And we've met the Empress of China. I think I'm going to end the episode here. Um, in, in the next one... I bet that's not even ancient Chinese. Uh, but in the next one, we will uh, settle a city and we will declare war. Wait, why are we friendly with her already? That seems weird. Okay, well, uh, I'll leave you off here. Thanks for watching.